my friends. Welcome to another math video. Hey, that was kind of fun. Kind of scared myself. Anyway, we are in a lesson. 11.7. We're cruising through chapter 11. Woohoo! And look at what we're doing today. Ooh, there's that word. Estimate. Scary. Hardly. I don't think so. Estimate. Making a good guess about something. Yeah. I'm telling you, we're going to estimate volume. And volume we talked about in our last video, how important it is. It's the space that something occupies. Okay? I kind of think of, you know, probably the first thing is probably soda. If you drink soda, some people across the country call it pop, which is kind of weird. Okay. Anyway, we do have an essential question. That's right. It's our learning target. It's our focus. It's our learning intention. What are we intending to learn? Okay. How can you use an everyday object to estimate the volume of a rectangular prism? Cool. So this is definitely an investigate. We have our purple hands. Purple. And it says Izzy is mailing 20 boxes of crayons to a children's education organization overseas. How cool. She can pack them in one of two different sized shipping boxes. Using crayon boxes as a cubic unit, about what volume is each shipping box in crayon boxes? Which shipping box should Izzy use to mail the crayons? So here we're going to need some materials just so that we're clear on, again, the problem that we're reading. The crayon box, as you see here, cameraman, yeah, that's our, that's our going to be our cubic unit. All right. And so we want to know about how many of these crayon boxes is going to be the volume for each shipping box. All right. So now we come down to materials. We have rectangular prism net B, which I don't have, and then two boxes, different sizes, which I don't have. But what I'm going to probably do is just kind of put up a couple of different uh, 3D um, pictures up here, and I'll just use these for my estimation. Okay. So here's like a couple of boxes here. Uh, yeah, shipping boxes is just have it in there so you understand the whole 3d thing going on but it says you're going to cut out fold and tape the net to form a rectangular prism label the prism crayons okay and then it says you can use this prism to estimate and compare the volume of two boxes so if we look at b it says using the crayon box that you made count to find the number of boxes that make up the base of the shipping box estimate the length to the nearest whole unit okay so let's just look at this picture over here See this girl looking at her shipping box and you can see she's got her, you know, her measurement tool, which was just kind of like a crayon looking box. And she's going to estimate how many of those are going to fit in that larger box that she has on her table. Number of crayon boxes that fill the base. Uh, you know, I'm just going to use an estimated number because I don't have a shipping box. I'm going to say, so let's, let me just go with 12 and then box two, we say it's a lot larger. We're going to say 24 okay i know my numbers are totally estimated but it's more the activity that you, you are estimating there's just no way i can really do this with you guys in the video so hopefully you you're doing this in class this is starting with a crayon box in the same position count to find the number of crayon boxes that make up the height of the shipping box estimate the height to the nearest whole unit okay number of layers in box one i'm going to say five okay box two i'm going to just increase that to ten all right now, box one has a volume of, so this is how we figure this out. If the base was 12, let's say a four by three, okay, I'm going to show that. The width being three and the length being four of the boxes is it filled, and it's five high, then the volume then, by that estimated, but what I've done, is going to be 12 times five. So it's going to take 60 crayon boxes because four times three is 12 times five equals 60, okay? And box two has a volume of, well, here I have really large, 24. We're going to say this is 6 by 4. That's my 24. That's just my base layer. It has 10 layers. Pretty tall box. So 6 times 4 is 24. Well, this is the power of 10. 240. Whoa. Okay? It's a larger box. So Izzy should use box to ship the crayons. What she was trying to do, it says, using great, about what volume is each shipping box in crayon boxes? Which shipping box should Izzy use to mail the crayons? She wants to mail 20 boxes of them. So, obviously, because my numbers are just random numbers, you can see that my 60 is really high. I wouldn't want to go to 240. That's too large. So, I'm going to say shipping box A. 
Okay, there's gonna be a lot of extra room in there though, so I should probably ship or tell Izzy, Izzy, you know what you should do? You should ship double that, 24 or triple that, 20 times three equals 60. Okay, I'm hoping you kind of get the idea of this this problem. Very difficult to do in a video. Now we come over here, draw conclusions. Explain how you estimated the volume of the shipping boxes. You guys are gonna be doing this a hands-on. So probably what you should have done is you first started with a layer, right? The base layer. That's what I did. I was thinking. The reason why I came up with the number 12, I was just thinking four by three. I was going to say that four crayon boxes in one direction and then three in the other direction. So like that's what I was thinking. So I would probably say, so first I estimated the number of crayon boxes that would fit. Oh, that would, ooh, that would fit in the base of the shipping box. Okay. Then I multiplied this amount by the number of layers. In my case was 12 in the very first one. And then I said there was five layers. Layers was equal to five. So I took 12 times five, which equals 60. Okay, crayon boxes. Again, totally estimated numbers just for this activity, okay? Now, it says analyze. If you had to estimate to the nearest whole unit to find the volume of a shipping box, how might you be able to ship a greater number of crayon boxes in the shipping box than you actually estimated? explain but well, you could probably answer this question in a couple of different ways um you know because i'm not using the net that you guys have um obviously there was a lot of extra space so maybe once i filled those all in i would realize that i have extra space so maybe i want to put more in get it to fit in there maybe i can get them to fit in a different way but it's just an estimation so how might you be able to ship a greater number of cram boxes in the shipping box that you actually estimated explain i would say by maybe moving them by turning the cram boxes in another direction maybe i can get some more in that way like standing them up i'll write that down um setting vertically like this here down here you can see this is on its you know on its side i would kind of say or maybe it's base depends on i guess this would be the side but lying down okay so that's one way by turning the crayon boxes in another direction might be a difference of shipping more of them um, this is such a hands-on activity it's really really hard to teach so i'm just going to kind of keep moving on make connections the crayon box has a length of three inches a width of four inches and a height of one inch the volume of the crayon box is okay so this is what i can do because volumes equal to length well i always like to write this on my page we have volumes equal to length times width times height so we're going to have three is the l times the width which is four and the height which is one and here we have 12 cubic inches because three times four times one is 12 okay and oh that's what we have here one two three four one two three and it's, the height is one inch so it says using the crayon box estimate the volume of the box at the right in cubic inches well the box to the right holds it looks like it has four boxes here okay in each of, and it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five layers. So, but 20 crayon boxes, because five times four. Multiply the volume of one crayon box by the estimated number of crayon boxes that fit in the box at the right. Okay, so I, I guess they're asking me what? 20 is the estimated times one, or actually the volume, no, the volume is gonna be 12. So we have 240. So the volume of the shipping box at the right is about 200, okay, 200 few, 240 cubic inches. So I had to read ahead to see what they were going at right here. So, yeah, because one of one, the volume, here it is, the volume of one crayon box up here by the estimated number. The volume of one crayon box was actually 12 cubic inches. That's what we determined. Sorry, I think I might have confused myself. So 12 times to 20. It's just like taking that smaller amount. So yes, we know that the volume for one crayon box is 12 cubic inches. We have 20 estimated. That gives us 240 and 240 cubic inches. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was kind of a bizarre video, my friends. Yes, you know, it's one of those kind of videos really hard to kind of do, you know, on a math video where you're trying to explain or uh, this is something really should be done in class with your teacher. Anyway, um, at least that gives us another opportunity to understand about volume. That volume is length times width times height. So we have three dimensions, and that is what is most important, I think, in this video. Okay, now, my friends, let's walk across the room.